When I was a kid in Catholic school, fights broke out on the playground at least once a week. We had no grass to play on, just rough asphalt, and kids were segregated by sex. We had the girls' yard, and on the other side of the auditorium, the boys' yard. Here, every recess was a Lord of the Flies male hierarchy struggle. When the inevitable fisticuffs broke out and the spectators formed into a circle cheering their favorite, the high-pitched sound of a whistle would split the air. And whichever brawny nun was on duty that day could be seen hustling across the boys' yard yelling, Break it up! Break it up! When Sister Mary something or other had arrived and the two combatants were being held back, the very first words from that referee in black and white were as follows. Okay, who started it? If neither of the gladiators fessed up immediately, the nun would turn to the crowd and ask again, who started it? In those days, there were no confusing moral equivalencies, no vague academic ideas about cycles of violence. It was understood that when a fight broke out, there was almost always a clear-cut provocation. And it didn't break down to something as simplistic as who threw the first punch. A kid who finally strikes out in self-defense is not in the same moral universe as the kid who's been bullying him mercilessly for weeks. In schoolyard America, both sides need to stop throwing blows. But just as every schoolyard supervisor once knew, just as every mother of rambunctious children once knew, a fight cannot be properly ended until one question is answered honestly. Who started it? Maybe you saw Peggy Noonan's column in July where she talked about a blog post from longtime Mother Jones contributor Kevin Drum. Here's that blog post. I'll link the whole thing below. Drum is being boldly honest. He's showing that conservatives have not moved farther right in recent years and that the left has moved ever more leftward. They are always pushing, always picking a fight. Here, Drum uses Pew Research to map the position of committed liberals and committed conservatives between 1994 and 2017. Liberals have drifted three full points to the left, while conservatives have gone farther right by only half of one point. In a recent video, I presented what I believe to be an obvious truth. To be conservative is, by definition, to be playing defense. If the core impulse of the left can be broken down to a one-syllable word, that word is change. All the heroes of the left are or were activists who believed that change was needed and who managed to force that change. Those people are heroes to the left because they changed laws. Think women's suffrage, workers' rights, and civil rights. Some things did need to be changed. Fine. They got changed. But the activists refuse to deactivate because all their heroes are activists. They have no other role models to emulate. Injustice has already been addressed, so their activism is now largely a performance. It's the venue in which the people who idolize the activists of yesterday can act out an endless passion play. When you cast yourself as a hero, somebody has to play the villain. And who gets that role? Conservatives, of course. Conservatives don't lust after constant change. The woke activists portray this as an intention to undo the past work of hero activists which nobody is trying to do. No matter what the issue is, we're portrayed as oppressors. Quick example. Our preference for strong borders is always framed as a desire to oppress the people on the other side of that border. We see a border as a legitimate barrier between countries who are each responsible for their own citizens. We see it as a protection for the structures of our own country and the jobs of our own workers, our own women our own minorities. They need to see border enforcement as an act of oppression because they need villains in order to cast themselves as heroes. And we get to be the villains every time. It's just that simple. Long before 2016, the left had sketched out a cartoon villain who represented all of America's past sins. Rich, white, male, heterosexual, capitalist. When Trump announced his candidacy, the left was instantly obsessed. He checked all the boxes, and he was more than happy to constantly ruffle the feathers of their activist wing. Conservatives don't even have an activist wing. That's not really a thing among people who prefer that no societal change be imposed upon them by government. But we sure do hear from their activists. The church and family conservatives of the red states have lived their whole lives feeling pinned down and pummeled. Donald Trump's presidency was our side throwing the bully off and landing some punches of our own. 
When political disagreement gets out of hand, savagery rules the day on both sides. Kill or be killed. That's how it feels to the combatants. We don't have a cranky woman in religious garb to blow the whistle on us. What we have instead is that people from both sides are stepping up to do it themselves. To their credit, an awful lot of progressives, like Sam Harris, Brett Weinstein, Bill Maher, and many others, have been criticizing the excesses of the left for quite some time. Joe Rogan calls himself a liberal, but other than elk hunting and jujitsu, no topic is more common on his show than exposing the excesses of woke America. The strongest voice of sanity within academia is Jonathan Haidt. He admits that he was in such a liberal bubble that he never even looked into conservative thought. Not until he was a social scientist in his 40s. But what an awakening he's had. Haidt explains the minds of legitimate liberals and legitimate conservatives in a way that reaches smart people on both sides of the chasm. His anti-wokeness books are bestsellers. And now, an intellectual class that spans the divide is hashing things out on thousands of podcasts that are seen and heard by millions. All of this mature conversation is making extremism of every sort look primitive. Listen, if the activist left really does want social justice, how about an apology for the wrongs they've done to the good, hardworking conservatives who they have long demonized? It was their incessant provocations that created the divide in the first place. That apology is coming in gradually, but we can't wait for complete satisfaction. The first order of business for patriots is to stop throwing haymakers and get back to acting like conservatives. Reasonable people everywhere are understanding the steps that turned our politics into a schoolyard fistfight. They know that bullying and self-defense are two very different things, and it matters who started it. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel and then click the little bell to get notifications.